Good morning. I am Alfred Anthony Pinkard, and it is an honor to serve as the 22nd president of Wilberforce University. And it is also my pleasure to welcome you to the second Bayard Rustin Lecture for the academic year. The Bayard Rustin Lecture Series was established to honor the life and legacy of Wilberforce alum and human rights and social justice icon, Bayard Rustin. It was conceived as an opportunity to bring thought leaders to campus, to engage, to challenge, and excite our students as an ongoing acknowledgement of Wilberforce's role in producing students like Bayard Rustin. Bayard Rustin entered Wilberforce in 1932, but was expelled in 1936 for organizing a student strike. He would later become the chief strategist for the modern civil rights movement and a key advisor to Martin Luther King Jr. It was in fact Bayard Rustin who was the chief organizer of the historic 1963 March on Washington. Bayard Rustin was a ardent and fierce advocate for human rights and social justice, whose contributions are not widely known by many Americans. We are proud of his Wilberforce roots and his example as a disruptor of the status quo. Thank you for joining us for today's lecture. We are Wilberforce, the first, the future, and the force. Suo Marte. Join me as I pray. God of grace and God of glory, we come on this day, the fifth day of Holy Week, just to say thank you for life, health, and strength as well as it is. Pray, O oh God, that you be with our speaker today for this lecture, and pray that you give her the knowledge, the wisdom, and understanding to say those things that would inspire us to do things in a way that we can be honored and great and you receive the glory. Was in your name I pray. Amen. Charity Martin King. Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to the Bayard Rustin Lecture Series, uh, sponsored by Dominion Energy. I am Dr. Kimberly Hardy Porter. I am the Special Assistant to the Provost for Academic Initiatives, and I am a very proud graduate of Wilberforce University, class of 1985. So I just want to welcome you um, to, again, this final lecture series of the school year. We are honored and grateful for, to Dominion Energy for their continued support uh, of this lecture series. And it has been an honor to present this series in the name of uh, name for such a great icon for social justice and equality. So again, thank you very much. There will be information about the essay contest that is associated with this contest. So please stay tuned and I will be back later with information on that. Enjoy the series. Charity Martin King Civic Business Coaching and Nonprofit Career spans more than two decades. The co-founder of the Leadership Development Company, Lead with Purpose Academy, is an activist, community mobilizer, and published author with nonprofit experience that includes the Young Scholars, the Village to Child and I Know I Can programs, and the Columbus Youth Commission. The Ohio State University alum is a highly respected basketball coach who claims one city, nine district and four regional championships and two state final four appearances. She is acclaimed as the most winning woman high school head basketball coach in the Columbus City League. Her honors include Outstanding Christian Leader, the Ohio Dominican University Advisor of the Year, the Statewide Governor's Award for Excellence in Community Education, the Tom Joyner Morning Show, Hardest Working Entrepreneur, the Columbus Landmarks Design Award and Who's Who in Black Columbus. The dedicated member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated is president of the sorority's Gamma Zeta Zeta chapter in Columbus, Ohio. She is also her sorority's Great Lake Regional Social Co Action Co-Coordinator and a member of the Zeta 100. The Silver Life member of the NAACP also belongs to the Columbus chapter of the League of Women Voters. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce my auntie, my mentor, and soror, 
our speaker for the Dominion Energy sponsored Bayard Rustin Lecture Series, Mrs. Charity Martin King. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Leah Smith for that introduction. It has been truly phenomenal to watch you grow and thrive. And it is an honor to see you at Wilberforce University in a fine capacity and being community conscious and action oriented. Good morning, Wilberforce. It is a pleasure to join you in this part of your series for the VR Rustin Lecture Series. Thank you to the president for having me. Thank you, Dr. Kimberly Porter. Thank you to the faculty, staff, students, family, community, and parents who are joining us today for this lecture series. I bring you greetings from here in Columbus, Ohio. What I will talk to you about today leans in on the move in movement, the move in movement. Because when we think about the contributions of Rustin, we must look at the move in movement, the move in movement. Rustin attended for a few years at Wilberforce University. Wilberforce University's history spans as being the first private university in these United States of America. Wilberforce is a champion of inclusivity and diversity and is a shining beacon to not only the state of Ohio, but to other HBCUs in the country. Thank you, Wilberforce. When I look at the move in movement in this lecture series, move, the word move is a verb. It is an action word, something that is not stagnant. You must put some energy behind movement. So move in movement is a verb. It is something that takes you from one place to the other. Move is a verb. When I look at Webster's Dictionary, move is defined as going in a specific direction or manner, a change in position, specific direction or manner, and change in position. Webster also lets us know that move means to progress or progress, to develop in a direction or movement. So you must develop, you must be specific, you must be guided, and you must know when to change position in the movement. Move is also defined as a change of place, position, or state. So sometimes when you're moving, you may go from one state to another state, whether it is elevation, displacement, or dissension you are going to move to a different state. So it is the move and movement. Wilberforce, I want to remind you that it is a verb. It requires action. Move requires action. The movement requires you to do something. Bayard Rustin is quoted as saying, the proof that one truly believes is in action. The proof that one truly believes is in action. It is in action. Action and what you do is what proves what you actually believe. Bayard Rustin was also a minister for a time. He was born in a Quaker family. So I believe that when he's saying to move and to believe in action is from a tree is known by its fruit. You know a person not by what they say, but by what they do, the move and movement. The M, mobilize. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take you from the M, the O, the V, and the E, Wilberforce, and we're going to talk about mobilizing. So the M is to mobilize and to march. Rustin understood that I have to mobilize people and I have to march forward. Just as the president said, he, he is known as being the major force and planner and organizer of the March on Washington. That is what he did. He also worked with A. Philip Randolph, and we will talk about that a little bit later. But he was a mobilizer and knew when it was time to march. It is action. And as a mobilizer, you must know how to bring people together. Mobilizing may cause you to be displaced because remember, movement is moving from one state to another, to being displaced, to being shifted, to being tossed around. He understood that I have to mobilize and I have to march. People have to see me move forward. And even in moving forward and marching and mobilizing, you may be knocked back. The late uh, John Lewis talked to us about you have to do something and you have to have action. But in that marching and moving forward, sometimes you just may be knocked back. So to mobilize and to march is the M. He's also quoted as saying, 
We need in every community a group of angelic troublemakers. He said, we need in every community angelic troublemakers. John Lewis also talked about trouble, good trouble. But here we hear Rustin saying, we need in every community angelic troublemakers. Angelic indicating a connection, a spiritual connection, and a sense of purpose and morality. You can't just cause trouble in a way that is not angelic. Now, many of us know we do have some troublemakers, people we might know or people we see who are doing something and creating trouble, but it is not in a divine or angelic in purpose way. In all that you do, be purposed. In all that you do, be purposed and angelic and guiding in your mobilization. The O for us is opposition. Bayard Rustin spent two years in prison. And at one point, he was on the chain gang. The O is opposition. When you're marching, moving forward, mobilizing, you will get opposition. Expect for someone to interrupt or try to interfere with your purpose and your position when you are trying to create change. Change is never easy especially if you're doing social change or you're in an environment where the culture is not conducive for change. You must be ready for opposition. I think it's best expressed in his words when he talked about his resistance to the draft, his resistance to war. They jailed him for two years. He really was supposed to get three. He spent time in prison. And this is what he writes, because I think he also understood that when history tells my story, I want my story to be told in my own words. This is what he writes. He says, on Saturday, November 13th, 1943, I received from you, he's talking about the federal government, I received from you an order to report for a physical examination to be taken Tuesday, November 16th at eight o'clock in the evening. He was specific. I wish to inform you that I cannot voluntarily submit to an order springing from the Selective Service and Training Act for war. He even understood that sometimes when you get an order, it doesn't mean that's what I have to do. He processed it through his systems. He processed it through what his belief system and his morality to understand that just because I received an order, because of my leadership and what God has called me to do, I just can't go right now. He says, there are several reasons for this decision all stemming from the basic spiritual truth that men are brothers in the sight of God. Number one, war is wrong. Conscription is an association of modern war. Thus, conscription for so vast and evil as war is wrong. Conscription for war is inconsistent with freedom of conscience, which is not merely the right to believe, but to act on the degree of truth that one receives, to follow a vocation which is God-inspired and God-directed. So what he said to the government, in a time where lynchings are common, in a time where the fear of black skin is prevalent as it is today, he said, I cannot go, and you gave me an order but that doesn't mean that that is the order that I must follow. The orders that I'm going to follow are those orders that come from God. He believed in something. He believed in something greater than himself. He said today, I feel that God motivates me to use my whole being, my whole being to combat by nonviolent means, the ever growing racial tension in the United States. At the same time, the state directs that I shall do its will which of these dictates can I follow, that of God or that of the state? Surely I must at all times attempt to obey the law of the state, but when the will of God and the will of the state conflict, I am compelled to follow the will of God. If I cannot continue in my present vocation, I must resist. I must resist, do something. You must have courage to get in trouble and to be troublesome and to agitate, but agitate in a way that is angelic and is purpose, not of your own will, but of that is that of your calling of what you've been called to do. The O for us is not only about opposition, it's about opportunity. Because even in 
a state of being jailed, criticized, resisting there was an opportunity. How many of us are missing our opportunities? Because even in times of distress and oppression, there is an opportunity for action. Find the opportunity during the oppression. Find the opportunity. The O is also about organizing. He was a very skilled organizer. The March on Washington would not have happened without the work of Bayard Rustin. He was an organizer. You must be organized. We have ideas or concepts or things we're supposed to do, but we don't take the time to organize. You must be organized in what you do. You must be deliberate, intentional. You must have a strategy and steps for success. An idea is nothing without organizing and being compelled and compelling to others. You must be organized. He was also a founding member of the Congress of Racial Equality Corps, along with James Farmer, George Hauser, and Bernice Fisher, names that we don't hear very often. They were the founders of CORE, the Congress of Racial Equality. Working alongside the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, they organized. They knew how to organize. It's not enough to talk about it, but you must be organized to mobilize. He was jailed, detained, and forced to be chained to someone else during the chain gang, the time he spent on the chain gang. And even though we're chained to someone else or to something, there is a purpose for what we must do. Let go of the things that are holding you back from exemplifying your purpose. So the O in MOVE is for opportunity, organizing, being occupied, occupied, sometimes in jail or occupied by those things that are not going to move you forward, cast away those things that won't move you forward. He's also quoted by saying, my activism did not spring from my being gay or for that matter, from my being black. Rather, it is rooted fundamentally in my Quaker upbringing and the values that were instilled in me by my grandparents who reared me. The V and move is for visionary and values. Visionary and values. The reason why we don't hear about Rustin is because he was openly gay. There is current legislation here in Ohio that says you can't talk about being gay. Bayard Rustin lived his life out loud as a gay homosexual male, black male in the movement. Because of this, his, his legacy, his work has been pushed down and hidden from society. We hear about names like Martin Luther King and even A. Philip Randolph, but we're less likely to hear about Bayard Rustin because he was openly gay. I must highlight this because it is oftentimes considered taboo to talk about these subjects in the black community. He did not shy away from the fact of letting people know, yes, I am gay. I am a homosexual male. It is a taboo subject in the churches. It is a taboo subject oftentimes in the black community. He lived his life out loud. And because the attention of the movement began to shift to him and his homosexual lifestyle, in a conversation with Martin Luther King, the idea was that he would step back and become the person behind the curtain to not take the attention away from the movement he sacrificed. And because of his sacrifice, we don't hear his name as often as we hear other names because he lived his life openly as a homosexual male. So the V is about visionary and values. He had a Quaker upbringing. Visionary is defined as thinking about or planning the future with imagination and wisdom, with imagination and wisdom. He had the wisdom to know that the movement will require me to sacrifice any ideas of self-promotion that he never had, but he knew how to operate as the organizer behind the curtain. Visionary is also defined as a person with original ideas about what the future will or could be like. He was a visionary. When I listen to his speeches with Malcolm X, and when I look at his critical writings, he is an intellectual with creative thought and bright ideas and new concepts that were not readily accepted. And his life was at risk. He was a visionary with values. He's quoted as saying, I am a Quaker. 
And as everyone knows, Quaker for 300 years on conscientious ground, been against participating in war. He was sentenced to three years in federal prison because he could not religiously and conscientiously accept killing his fellow man. He had values and was a man of vision. And being a man of vision with values, he also surrounded himself with the appropriate circle. In his circle was A. Philip Randolph, who was a mentor. Interesting enough, Bayard Rustin was a mentor to Martin Luther King. You must have mentorship. Every great leader, no matter where they are positioned in life, has a mentor and believes in mentorship. Surround yourself with the right circle. He was also good friends with James Baldwin, activist, creative James Baldwin. Surround yourself with the right circle. You will limit your trajectory if you are linked up, chained up, and surrounded by the wrong people in your circle. They say, show me your circle, I'll show you your elevation or lack thereof. He was surrounded with the right circle. Inspired by A. Philip Randolph, he was into labor rights, organizing human interests that, ex that extended beyond race and ethnicity. He believed in the poor people's movement. He believed in economic empowerment and economic advancement. He did not limit his conversations and his activism and his ideas about social change to race and ethnicity. It was a human rights issue as a gay man. He was a mentor and an advisor who knew the importance of his circle. Know your circle. He is quoted by saying, it occurred to me shortly after that that it was an absolute necessity for me to declare homosexuality. Because if I didn't, I was a part of the prejudice. I was aiding and abetting the prejudice that was a part of the effort to destroy me. He was honest. He was honest. He said, if I did not be honest about being a homosexual male, I was contributing to the prejudice by not being honest. He lived his life in honesty. He was honest. He knew where he was at. He didn't put any covers on it. He didn't apologize for it. And he was honest. How many times do we find leaders of people we'd like to follow, but they are not living their life in a way that is honest? Rustin was honest. And because he lived his life in honesty, he was ostracized in many circles. But it did not diminish his influence. He was an influencer behind the scenes who knew it was important in your lifestyle to be honest live life and be honest. He said, because to not do so was aiding and abetting the prejudice that was a part of the effort to destroy me. Martin Luther King, this is what he is also quoted by saying, Martin Luther King, with whom I worked very closely, became very distressed when a number of the ministers working for him wanted to dismiss me from his staff because of my homosexuality. Dr. King was criticized for being friends with Bayard Rustin. He was criticized. Dr. King understood that it's more important to show humanity and love and kindness to my fellow man than to participate in that type of a narrative and conversation. Dr. King was criticized for standing next to the talent in Bayard Rustin. And many of you will be criticized because of the people that you choose to work with. However, recognizing the man inside of the body and the mission that Rustin had for the civil rights movement was more important to Dr. King than it was Dr. King's critics. And that says a lot. Have the courage to stand up for one another. Wilberforce University students have the courage to stand up for one another. Our E in move and movement is for empathy and education. Empathy and education. Empathy is cognitive, emotional, and compassionate. Cognitive, we must think about it. It's a, tan it's a tangible thing. It's something that we should be able to touch and feel. Empathy must be cognitive, emotional, and very compassionate care about one another. See yourself in a position that someone else is. There is always someone here that we can help and lend a helping hand. He showed empathy and he believed in education. He is one of our foremost scholars and intellectuals in the black community. We must continue to elevate his voice and his legacy. They attempted to erase him 
from history because he did not fit the appropriate vision of what people wanted to see in a leader. How many times have we seen something that isn't just quite packaged the way that it should? Packaged in a way that is acceptable and we miss the core ingredients because we don't like the way something looks. We must show empathy and be educated in a way that is cognitive, emotional, and compassionate to move. That is our EM move, the charge, Wilberforce. The move and movement, the charge to US students as staff faculty, the community. Rustin is quoted by saying, the only way to reduce ugliness in the world is to reduce it in yourself. The only way to reduce ugliness in the world is to reduce it in yourself. We must have the time to be introspective. Be introspective. Evaluate where you are in life. Are you showing care? Are you showing compassion and empathy? Are you pursuing education at the highest ways? Because and many opportunities have been removed from us as a Black community to pursue education. Are you pursuing education in a way that is earnest, honest, and compassionate? Pursue education is the charge. Reduce the ugliness in the world by reducing it in yourself. Find a way to continue to elevate and to evolve and to grow and to develop, maximize the opportunities. Maximize your opportunities and move in the movement. Move in the movement. He was awarded after his death, the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Barack Obama. He was also elevated in, in many conversation circles, just as where we are here. And I compel you to think about this. How many times do we not know what our impact is, truly is? You may not know what your impact is. You may not see the fruits of your labor while you are here on earth. You may not receive your flowers until you are gone. Do it not for the flowers, for the accolades, for the recognitions, for the medals. Do it because it is something that you have been purposed to do. He led with purpose. He had a purpose existence. He did what he did because he believed that that is what God had for him in his purpose. No man, no government, no university, no entity, no leader or so-called leader could stop Bayard Rustin from exemplifying and realizing his purpose. You may not be recognized for it. But as you self-examine and as you elevate and as you move forward and as you assist, assist in a way that there is no expectation of recognition because it just may never come. He dedicated his life to social change. He dedicated his life to elevating marginalized voices. He dedicated his life to the realization of what he believed his purpose was, of man of mobilizing, a man who understood that he might receive opposition, a visionary who showed empathy, the move in movement. Thank you, Wilberforce, for having me. Thank you for this lecture series that allows us to dissect these issues and to talk about our civil rights leaders. Thank you for having me. Thank you, community. Continue to lead with purpose. Okay, wow. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. King, for that powerful message, uh, your powerful words. And everyone, I hope you all are as um, just as inspired as I am to do something for the good of your community, to put the move in movement in your own personal movements and own personal agendas and things that you have. That was great. Thank you again so much for that. <clears throat> Excuse me, that was a great way to end uh, the lecture series for this semester. And um, thank you again for everyone that is uh, supporting and that is uh, just a part of this lecture series that is sponsored by uh, Dominion Energy. So as I stated before, uh, there is an essay contest associated with this lecture series that is open to all Wilberforce University students, all students. So there are a few rules and um, some of this information has been given to your instructors, but I will give you um, a little bit uh, of information about that as well. So first of all, <clears throat> the essay 
that you submit must be turned in through a Wilberforce University email. If it is a personal email, it will not be accepted. Secondly, it has to be a Word document or a PDF. Please do not send in um, pictures or JPEGs or things from your phone for this essay contest. And you are to follow the rubric that everyone should, that who's interested in participating in this contest, there is a rubric that was sent out to all of the Wilberforce University instructors. So if you uh, need that, please contact them about that. Your submissions should be sent into my email, which is kporter at wilberforce.edu. Again, that is kporter at wilberforce.edu. The deadline for submissions is 11.59 p.m. on Friday, April 22nd. And the winners should will be announced um, through our social media platforms, through our Facebook, our Instagram, and on our website on April the 29th. So um, look forward to seeing your entries. Remember the theme for the essay is going to be the move and movement. So how are you going to be the move and movement for your own personal circle, whether it's your family, your church, your organizations, your community. How are you going to be the move in movement? So again, thank you very much everyone for participating, for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing your essays and have a great day. On behalf of the Wilberforce University community, I'd like to thank today's speaker, Charity Martin King, for accepting the invitation to be our Bayard Rustin lecturer. Thank you for inspiring our students to make a difference in the world they inhabit. Like Bayard Rustin, let us commit to being fearless in our desire to have a just and caring world where every human being can feel valued, affirmed, and celebrated for who they are. We are Wilberforce, the first, the future, and the force. Suo Marte. Now we give you thanks for this great program. Lord, I thank you and I praise your name and I pray that those things and the words that have been said, that they would encourage us to grow up in greatness, encourage others, and to do those things as we travel through life on our way to eternity, to make this world a better place to live. In your name I pray, amen.